What's up guys? Welcome back to Napoli Central. My name is Giovanni. As always, if you've been to this channel, you know that this is going to be my match review for the day. We just played Udinese midweek. It's on a Wednesday. Uh, crazy, crazy things going on in Serie A all around, honestly, with today's, with some of today's matches at least. But at least for the Scudetto race, crazy stuff. And I'll get right into it. So I just want to say uh, we're at 250 now. So awesome. Thank you guys very much for all the support. And hopefully we can keep it going. So I hope you guys will subscribe, like I say, all the time. This is a Napoli channel. I usually have my Napoli backdrop behind me. and You could see my Napoli jersey on and whatnot. But even if you're not a Napoli fan, if you're a whatever fan from another league, or you just, even if you're a Juve fan or a Roma fan, I don't care. As long as you want to, you know, if you're English speaking and you want to know what's going on in the Napoli world, at least for their matches, I'll, I'll try to expand soon. Subscribe to this channel. It would really mean a lot to me and like this video as well. But let's get into it. Crazy, crazy match today. A 4-2 win for Napoli, which didn't seem like it would happen, at least if you're like me and you're pessimistic, but also when Napoli goes down twice to an Udinese team that lost eight straight games, nine if you count a club friendly, coming into this freaking match. Eight straight Serie A losses, and they're going to play hard against Napoli. It's just crazy. And, and Napoli had dominated the first, you know, like 10, 20 minutes, had a couple shots on goal with Insigne. Uh, I don't even. Oh, Hamsig had one. Couldn't score. Before the half ends, the 41st minute. Is it Yankto? I hope I pronounced that correctly. He scores a goal. The ball is lowly driven into the box. Reina couldn't get to it. It ends up. Uh, I guess there's a little slight deflection, but Yankto ends up on the other end of it to just smash it into the net. And Udinese is up 1 0 at the San Paolo. Everything's going crazy. Uh, at that point, Juve was winning 1-0 through an Alexandro goal, so it seemed very bad for Napoli. Obviously, there was still plenty of time, though. And then uh, in, in, the, in 47th minute, because of two uh, minutes of stoppage time, it was four minutes, but in the second minute of stoppage time, Insigne scored the equalizer. Uh, he gets into the box and uh, a low-driven shot to the, I guess you could say far post, past Bizzotti, lowly driven shot. Bizzotti actually got his hand on it. Couldn't save it, and Insigne ties it up. So it's 1-1 going to the half. A lot better off that way because if Juve is winning, Napoli definitely needs to win. So um, it's looking at least okay for Napoli. Coming out of the half, Udinese is pressing up, pushing up front, uh, up high. It looks like there are goals coming for them, and it does through Ingelsen, who um, is able to... A uh, ball is driven into the box. Ingelsen gets the cross, uh, and he gets his foot on the end of it, goes past Serena. Uh, you know, they, they work for the goal. They got the goal, so not much you can say there. Um, so it's 2-1 Rudinez at this point, And unfortunately, Napoli is losing. And it looks like everything's going to go to hell. And then at that point, uh, Crotone scores a tying overhead kick, apparently, just like Ronaldo did. And, so, and now everyone's making it a point as if only bicycles are scored against Juventus. And it's just crazy because it's Crotone at Crotone, 1-1. If they hold on to a tie at least and Napoli can had had to win this match, it'd be cut to four points, and that's what ends up happening because Albiol ties the game with an incredible header. Bizzotti gets to that too, but is not able to save it. It goes into the net. Then you have Milik on a rebound. A shot's taken on the rebound from a Bizzotti save. Milik is there in the 70th minute to put it in the net, and his goal will stand, will stand as the game winner. 3-2 Napoli at that point. And then uh, Tonelli on a freaking magnif magnificent header. He was marked too. But it was a bullet of a header into the top corner. And it makes a 4-2 now at that point, a 75th minute. Cordona ends up tying with Juventus. So a 1-1 result there. Only one point for Juve means that an Anopoli win. We make a two-point progression. And we're back to where we were as if we had won against Milan last week. And Juve had won against Sampdoria. So four-point lead for Juventus. And now it all depends. Well, not all depends, but... A lot of it depends on Juve Napoli this weekend on the 22nd on Sunday because God willing that Napoli wins that game, it's a th it's a one point game and one point race for the Scudetto and then Juve still has to play Inter and Roma. Napoli still has a couple difficult opponents, but not to I mean that seismic level. So you never know what happens in the freaking Serie A this year. It, it seems as if when someone's going to pull away, the other team comes back. Um, I mean, I was going nuts because this game against Udinese, you lose, they lose eight straight matches and then they come in and they play well. They played very well. You know, Patella, I think, played pretty well. He came off eventually for Adnan, but, um, the goals, Udinese worked for them and got them. That first goal was not offsides. I don't know what Napoli fans are saying. Sorry, guys, if you think there was offsides, you got to go look at it. I'll be able to hold them on side. It was, it was a good goal. 
Uh, VAR checked it. It was a good goal. Um, you know, I'm not saying now that we played too poorly. It's just that we really weren't making our chances. We just weren't converting, just like last week. We weren't putting them in the net. And then I guess once Crotone... T I, honestly, when Crotone tied, I felt the stadium, at least, you know, I'm watching it on a stream. But where I'm watching it, it seemed as if the, the, the people got louder and they saw that it was 1-1. So it kind of pushed Napoli to keep going forward, get the tying goal, and then push them even further and further. It was almost like the Kievo game. As soon as the result was in, uh, or that Napoli was lo was losing, the crowd really got behind them and, and really pushed them forward and, and made it happen. So, And credit to the players for not melting under pressure. I think, you know, Hamsik wasn't playing well in the first half. Uh, Diawada wasn't playing too great. But everyone turned it around. Milik was very good today. Even off the ball, his passes is great. Are, are great. His playmaking, his visions there, it's great. You know, Mertens looked okay when he came on, so that's good to see as well. I would start Milik again against U of A because I think Milik was all positive today. I, I don't think he made too many mistakes. His, his first touches were great. Insignia, again, another great game. It's just that the other games he didn't score. He finally scored today. Um, Albiol was great, and... Tonelli played really good too. I mean, you. I don't know if you can start him against Juventus. You don't really want to do that. You have Koulibaly coming back, but a great performance from Tonelli. He's been sharp the past couple starts he's gotten, so good for him. I think Zielinski was, was pretty decent today as well. So we're moving in the right direction now. We're, it's a four-point race. We'll see what happens Sunday, and I'll leave it at that. So, guys, if you liked anything I had to say, or even if you just, I don't know, are happy to Napoli one like the like the uh, the video and, and subscribe to the channel I'm, I'm just uh, very excited and have a lot of energy right now so I'll see you guys in the next one hopefully I can make a video Sunday after work and uh, shout out for Napoli Sam